welcome to Minneapolis High School Basketball here on 910KNA.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8 in Minneapolis. So as the Minneapolis Lady Lions getting ready to take on the Ellsworth Lady Bearcats here in the first round of Substate as we're on our home floor in a uh, dual matchup tonight as the girls play first and the boys play first. Not something you normally see in the first round of Substate. Usually they're separated because you've got two different teams playing two different opponents. But not in this case tonight as the Lady Bearcats um, take on the Minneapolis Lady Lions as well as the uh, Minneapolis Lions taking on the Ellsworth Bearcats. Lady Lions coming in as a two seed. Uh, Ellsworth Bear Lady Bearcats a seven seed because there is a bye on the backside of the girls. Their, uh, St. John's Military does not have a girls squad. So you've got uh, uh, Minneapolis Lady Lions as a two and Ellsworth as a seven. On the boys side it's the Minneapolis Lions are a one seed and the Bearcats are a eight seed. So uh, Lady Bearcats though um, have had Dale, as Dale was telling me earlier, have had a rough season so far this year as they are 0-20. Not one to remember. So, uh, one in. Uh, last year, 1-19. But they could make their season tonight. That's right. So you can't, uh, you can't overlook this. you got to come in prepared. We're on our home floor, and Minneapolis is going to have to put it to the hardwood and uh, fight hard to come away with a victory tonight. Well, Ellsworth, uh, I kind of hope Minneapolis would have a little more of a tussle here tonight than Ellsworth. Ellsworth shouldn't uh, present too much of a problem for Minneapolis, but, you know, it'll be a good warm-up. Uh, and if uh, they get some confidence underneath them and they're outside shooting, we can put 60 on the board and, you know, have a fun time. But uh, I think they could use a little more of a stiff competition uh, to prepare them for the Bloyd game, which is uh, which going to be th uh, Friday, I believe. Uh, yes, Friday. If, if we uh, if we win and if Beloit wins, Beloit is playing Norton, Norton uh, at Beloit. At and Beloit, they would yep. be favored. They're Beloit's three seed. Norton is a six seed, but you never know. Yeah. So uh, you expect that we would see uh, Beloit on uh, if we can get by tonight and uh, uh, play then on the uh, on. Uh, can't even think. Thursday night, is that what you said? Friday night. The, Friday. Boys, the Friday. boys will play Thursday and the girls Friday. Boys Thursday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Minneapolis Lady Lions uh, will take on the Ellsworth Bearcats tonight. We played them twice already, guys. And Dale, do you have those stats with you? Yes. Uh, the Lions, of course, had, did win twice this season by very identical scores almost. Uh, both times the Bearcats scored 25 points. The first time the Minneapolis Lions scored 62 points, the second time 61. So pretty pretty much carbon copy games as far as the score is concerned. The Lady Lions have won uh, six in a row now over the Lady Bearcats. We lead the series by 37 to 30. Excuse me, Ellsworth leads the series by 37 to 33. Here at Minneapolis, it's tied up at 17 to 17. I'm sure both of the games, Minneapolis got uh, the mercy rule running towards the end of the game, and uh, I look forward to that happening here tonight. Minneapolis has won by 40 in both the contests. It took them a little while to get there, but once they get rolling, uh, that press uh, presents a lot of problems for this Ellsworth team, not really known for their ball control, their capabilities uh, breaking that press. So far this year, they're just not able to handle Minneapolis's pressure. But well, that, you got to play the game. You can't count it. Yet. You're exactly right, Dale. And uh, it's kind of like those wrestling matches we saw out at Hayes. Uh, every one of them counted, and uh, you know the, the state champ from a year ago is not always uh, the shoe in for the state champ this year. And we saw a couple of uh, upsets here and there, but for the most part, uh, those that were ranked and uh, they came through with victories out there. Minneapolis having a pretty good wrestling season and a finale out of Hayes uh, on Saturday, Class 3A, 2A state wrestling match meet. Uh, Brian ended up with uh, third place medal and Corman ended up with fourth place medal for Minneapolis in the finals. So, uh, successful season for all the wrestlers. Uh, I want to congratulate all of them on a, a very good season and uh, takes all of them working together to have that team work as they did. Uh, Lake champions 
and uh, performed very well out of state. But we were talking a little bit about how the uh, first two games against Ellsworth girls here have been pretty much carbon copies. Between the girls and the boys squad of Minneapolis, they pretty much had a carbon copy season. Both teams finished with 16 wins and four losses. Then come the differences. The boys tie for the league lead. Uh, the Sacred Heart, the girls got second in the league to Beloit. And the girl, the boys uh, are the number one seed in substate at Beloit, where Minneapolis girls come in second behind Smith Center, who again draws the bye tonight because of St. John's military not having a girls team. So, other than the season for the two squads. Other than the fact that uh, we take, have a risk of meeting Beloit in the second round of substate, um, I'm okay with not having a bye tonight. And yes, yeah, uh, just from the standpoint of, I, I sometimes think it's a, a good idea to uh, to to have that uh, to have that game under your belt. So uh, Minneapolis uh, gets a chance tonight to get their kind of their feet underneath them uh, to prepare for. Uh, for Beloit, uh, I, you can't overlook it tonight. They, I hope they don't, because uh, uh, this could make a for season, uh, being the standpoint that this is this is their season. It starts all over right now. Six games, win and go on, lose, yeah. say goodbye. You got it. So, and that would make a season for a team to come away with a victory. So. I look for the barn to fill up here tonight. The Lions Den should uh, fill up with a substate game in town, and uh, not only one, but two of them. So they get to see uh, two for the price of one here tonight. I look forward to a pretty good crowd here later on. So. Absolutely, as, as we're about a minute away from the start of the substate, and I think, uh, I think we will have the national anthem here in just a second, we will. Welcome back to Minneapolis as Minneapolis High School Pep Band just uh, did a nice job with the National Anthem. And, and uh, uh, Mike, uh, uh, as you said earlier, what are some of the things that you expect to see to start out tonight? I look for uh, Minneapolis to get their shooting eye back from the outside, uh, three-point shooting. Uh, I don't know, Ellsworth a little tougher inside than uh, giving credit for, but I'm sure we'll work inside out. and. It sure would be nice to see the girls get uh, some confidence in that long shot. Yeah. Now, if I remember right, in the last two games, as I think Scott alluded to earlier, the press has been what blew the game over so far. For Ellsworth, starting guard Brittany Muro, a 5'8 senior. For Minneapolis, Ashton Macy, the point guard. Mackenzie Cranston, a 5'11 senior. For Ellsworth, she's turned us a little bit down low and has got some height, but uh, Minneapolis able to ward her off. Uh, Connor Fulton, the power forward for Minneapolis. Senior, this is the last time on the floor for Connor Fulton here at Minneapolis High. She will graduate. We'll move on to Beloit for the rest of the substate later on this week, as well as Shea Shoemaker for Ellsworth. Friend Cravens, 5'8 freshman, plays well for an underclassman. And for Ellsworth, Cassie Landon. Landon, a 5'4 junior for Minneapolis. Kelsey Page, 
shooting guard. Also at 5'11", Madison Conley, 5'11", junior, gets the nod for Ellsworth. Lady Cats have two 5'11", girls on the floor, on for Minneapolis, Allie Steinbrock at post. We're just ready to tip off here, Minneapolis and Ellsworth. This first game of the sub-state, as Scott mentioned, uh, the season actually is as starting here tonight, but uh, it's a big game for both clubs, especially for Ellsworth. If they could create a, a havoc for Minneapolis and get keep close in this ball game, gain a little confidence, um, possible they could stay close for a while, but I, I really look for Minneapolis to uh, take control of this game early and not look back. Yeah, I, I, I think you're exactly right, Mike. The, old, the only thing is, is if for some reason you overlook them, and I don't think uh, Coach Weatherman is, is going to let these girls do that. But they've got to, uh, they've got to set the tempo at the start. They've got to come out, force the press, get some easy buckets, and then work the, uh, and just continue from that point on. So here we go. Sub State is here. We've gone through a, seems like a short basketball season, but uh, Shea Shoemaker will jump it for Minneapolis. Madison Connolly, 5'11", junior for Ellsworth. Grill is not very high in the air at all, and that ball is tipped out of there. They try to get it down to Cravens. Now Shoemaker with the ball. Gets it off to Macy. It's a 2-3 zone by Ellsworth. Skip pass to Fulton. Now Shoemaker, three ball on its way. No good. And Cravens with the box out. Got a little bit too close to Shoemaker, and Shoemaker dives and hits the floor, and it will be a three-shot foul as Shoemaker was beyond the arc. Comes up holding her shoulder. Must have yeah. slammed it to the fluid there. Don't want to dive too hard. Shoemaker with a little acting there. Free throw on its way. 85% free throw shooter and it falls in. You're, you're so suspicious, Mike. Well, Mike, uh, did you, you missed the other, you missed the other game. Uh, Evidently, I lost some percentage points. She Set had a, throw on its way. It's she good. had a very rough night yes. she at had, uh, Russell. She was, uh, uh, well, five or six, six here. Uh, six for 14. Third one on its way. It's good. Three for three. Shoemaker puts Minneapolis up by three. Two, two, one. Trapping full court pressure here by Minneapolis. They get the ball in to Landon. Now back to Cravens. Clears the timeline for the Lady Cats. Minneapolis uh, in a little bit of a zone. Long shot by. Landon, no good, and Allie Steinbrock with the rebound. Now a pass to Kelsey Page. Now Macy on the right wing. Skip pass to Fulton. Has an open look for a minute. Now back to Macy. Baseline drive, jump shot is off the rim, no good. And Steinbrock with an offensive board for Minneapolis. Now Macy again on the back side. Has her shot blocked. And it's kicked out of bounds by Conley, I believe. Number 11. I believe. It will be Minneapolis ball to play in and they zone up into a 2-3 zone. That throw clear out on top to Shoemaker. Three point shot, no good. The stick back by Steinbrock is no good and Conley. Her Cranston has the rebound for the Lady Cats. 3-0 Minneapolis. Cravens with the ball. Guarded by Fulton. Dump down pass inside and Macy's right there intercept. Minneapolis created a couple of turnovers. Ellsworth not able to get the ball in deep. Baseline drive by Fulton. Shot up and in. Connor Fulton with a nice dribble drive to the baseline on the low block. Oh, what now a save. Page. Page with the thievery gets it over to Macy. Back to Fulton. Ba down the lane she goes. Shot up. Yeah. Nice job over there on the left side as Minneapolis. Uh, Kelsey Page did a great job over there and I threw it back into the feet, and uh, they get a turnover, and it transitions into a bucket, and we've got a 7-0 lead with Fulton at the free throw line. Page with a big steal and rescued it. Just happens to get back to the hands of a Minneapolis player. Now Fulton gets the and one. Her free throw is off the side of the rim, no good. And Minneapolis has a 7-0 lead here. 6-16 left, first quarter. Cravens pass over the top to Merrill. Craven's, uh, Craven's pretty good, a little good, 
pretty good freshman, pretty good looking freshman. Um, she's got some talent. I don't know that she's got the got the help with her though. Al Williams checks in for Cravens. 5'9 freshman. Long shot, no good. By Steinbrock and the long term goes to Shoemaker. Uh, Fulton, turnaround jump shot by Shoemaker on the low block is up and in. Now Minneapolis, nine, Ellsworth nothing. And another turnover. Just cannot handle the pressure. They're throwing over the top and uh, just too high to handle the pass. Full timeout being, no, 30 second timeout taken. We'll take one, two. Minneapolis leading, nine, nothing. Well, well, Dale, while you get that ready, I'll just, uh, we'll go ahead and keep it here. An interesting stat from uh, the first game, 23 turnovers by Ellsworth in the first half. And the first game, 16 in the second half of that ball game, already five tonight at the 549 mark in the first quarter. Ellsworth with a daunting lineup here as 5'11", 5'11", and 5'9", out there on the floor at once. It's a pretty good sized lineup for a girls basketball team. There's a long pass to the other side. Fulton baseline drive. She walks before she put the ball on the floor. Minneapolis Ellsworth. picks up a full court press here. Ellsworth to play it in. Fulton with a good defense on Williams. Tries to get down the sideline behind the back dribble. Gets it off to Murrell. They clear the timeline. It's tipped away from Page by Page from behind, and Steinbrock right there to pick up the loose ball. Fulton had a shot down low, partially blocked, and Ellsworth picks up the loose ball. Page all over the floor right now. Ellsworth running some players in and out. They've got uh, two uh, two fresh players coming in. Bettenbrock played quite a few minutes last game. Is in in the backcourt as the seniors are having a little trouble handling the ball. Now on the right wing, Cravens. Looking inside, Williams is there. Out front to Conley. Landon with the ball out front to Bettenbrock. Pass down low to Cravens, or Cranston. She thought he, she had her cutting to the basket. She stopped, the ball went out of bounds. Another turnover for Ellsworth. I'm not keeping track, but I know of four or five already in this game. Page, jump shot, back rim, no good. Williams was there for the rebound, and Page with a reach-in foul. It's her first. What were you asking there, uh, Mike? Turnovers? Yeah, I'm not seven. Keep, I've got seven. I'm trying to keep track of them. And uh, not officially. A few for just the first quarter. Nine to nothing, Lady Lions with the lead. Ellsworth gets it in to Williams. She puts the ball on the floor. Minneapolis looking to trap and do, and Williams with a good job gets it off to Landon. Jump shot, no good. And Connolly, I believe, is over the back. I believe you believe correctly. It's her first foul. And that is Ellsworth's third team foul. I missed one. I, Cravens and Connolly, I missed another one somewhere. Macy clears the timeline for Minneapolis says. Ellsworth in a little bit of a matchup zone. All the way in, Fulton shot off the glass, no good. Steinbrock gets the rebound, gets it back to Fulton, her shot, good. Nice hustle there by Allie Steinbrock as she goes to the floor and uh, gets it into Connor's hands. Nice she, job. She did the dirty work there, didn't she? She did. Williams with the ball, there's a tip by Page and the tie up. Turnover created by Page and the... It is Minneapolis ball, so it is a turnover. Possession arrow to Big Blue. AC over to Fulton on the right wing. Now Page on the left wing, skip pass to Fulton, backs up beyond the three-point line, shot no good. Shoemaker has the rebound. Back out front to Page. Now Shoemaker, left wing, shot, short. Very short. And Conley has the board for Ellsworth. 11 nothing. Minneapolis. Out front with the ball, Bettenbrock. Left wing, Conley. Three point shot on its way, it's good. If she can step out and shoot the three, she's 5'11. 
and just a junior. And if she could get some help next year, they could uh, have a team, at least get a couple wins maybe. <laughs> and Apples with the ball, Allie Steinbrock holding the ball above her head, get out front to Macy. She's looking inside, cannot get the ball into Shoemaker. Baseline drive, Paige, jump shot, no good. Finally has a hand on it. Fulton comes out of there with it. Shoemaker, dribble drive in. She, she goes all the way into the basket, shot up and in. Timeout called by Minneapolis. It's a 30 second timeout as they will give their starters a breather as Lady Lions take a 13 to 3 lead as we're at the 248 mark here in Minneapolis. Yeah, you ready? important. Your family, auto, home, and other possessions. Call your Farm Bureau Financial Services agent in Minneapolis, George Dressy. Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company. Let's make it delicious. Let's make it fast. Let's make it a meal from KT's in downtown Minneapolis. KT's, home of the almost world-famous hamburger. KT's wishes the Lions best wishes during the upcoming season. The State Bank of Delphus and the Ottawa County... Welcome back to Minneapolis as the Lady Lions with the lead 13-3. Minneapolis gets four new players in, and Shea Shoemaker stays on the floor. Drag, Baker, Crossan, and Walker. Ellsworth clearing the timeline. Williams with the ball. Good looking 5-9 freshman. In it goes to Cranston. Turnaround shot off the back of the rim. No good. Shoemaker has the board. Outlet pass to Walker, Minneapolis on the move. Ellsworth does a good job getting back on defense. Walker left wing, gets it off to Baker. Riley Baker's entry pass to Crossan is knocked out of there nicely by Ellsworth. Conley left wing, entry pass to Cranston. Back to Conley, shot on its way, there's another one. She's hit two from exact, exact spot. Two three-pointers and Ellsworth hanging close here, 13 to six. Shoemaker all the way in, left hand scoop shot, no good. Gets her own rebound and the left hand shot that time is up and in. Nice job uh, with her own rebound right there as uh, she gets the put back. Williams in the backcourt looking for some help. Gets it off to Cranston, back to Williams. And we've got him 10, that's yep, 10. There we go. Nice job by the full court pressure of Minneapolis. Ellsworth unable to get it across. In 10, and that must be the eighth turnover. Tenth. Tenth, tenth turnover. I missed a couple. Walker, right wing, Baker. Out front it goes to Greg. Skip pass to Walker, left wing. Oh. And she throws it away. Layup, no good. Well, By Merrill, up. she had it all the way in. Now Shoemaker's pass underneath. Catches Baker a little bit off guard. I think Shoemaker should have just went ahead and shot the ball. She was all the way to the rack. Fulton comes in for Shoemaker. 15 to six, Minneapolis. Minute 12 left, first quarter. Merrill with the ball in the backcourt. Being guarded by Walker. Walker double just dribble. enough pressure to get Mural to use both hands. Double dribble is the call. And Minneapolis will have it with a minute left in the first quarter. Walker way out on top. Mural comes to get her. Now Fulton off to Baker. Craig looking inside, back out front to Walker. Good ball movement here by Minneapolis. Skip pass to Walker. She has a look. Shot no good. And Conley. Clears the glass for Ellsworth. Al Merrill with a nice drive all the way in to the basket. Jump shot is good. 15 to 8. I think if Minneapolis has any negative on this team, it's uh, part of their defense in the half court set. Great hustle by uh, Crossing to get the rebound uh, with the tie up. Baker had a great dribble penetration. That thing. Just ran right out as it rolled around that rim a few times before it came out. <clears throat> 24 seconds left in the first quarter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that will come with uh, experience, but there's a nice play by Greg. Merrill able to keep hold of the ball. 15 to shoot here in the first quarter. 
Jump shot, no good. Finally in there for the rebound and stick back is good. He has eight points here in the first quarter of the 10 for Ellsworth. Fulton, three-point shot on its way. It's good. Oh, nice job. Connor Fulton, she hits that one from just about two steps beyond the three-point range, and she had nothing but net on that one, and that one just flies right in. Nice arch, nice finish. 18 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. Minneapolis Lady Lions with the lead. We will be back here in just a, just a minute. You're listening to 910canada.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. Bank in Minneapolis are locally owned community banks committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to <clears throat> Minneapolis, Kansas as Minneapolis League Alliance with the lead 18 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. Minneapolis had a, he has brought. <laughs> Lady Lions had a 17 to 6 lead in the second game and a 12 to 4 lead in the first game. As we will start the uh, start the second quarter here. Connor Fulton hits the bomb at the end of the first quarter. Presence of mind to put it up. It was uh, she was running out of time and had to crank it up. It was nothing but net. Minneapolis to play it in here to start the second quarter. 18-10 <clears throat> with the lead in the backcourt. Macy with the ball. Gets it off to Connor Fulton. Steinbrock back in along with Shoemaker and Page. There's a long shot by Fulton. No good. Page with the rebound. Shot good. Kelsey Page with the stick back. And Scott had kind of made notice in the scorebook. Minneapolis not doing a lot of scoring other than the bit the big two seniors. There's a nice stick back by Ellsworth, no good, and they're in there fighting for the rebound. <clears throat> Bolton uh, catches her with the body and she will go to the free throw line to shoot two. No, it's on Macy with the reach in foul. Second two foul. foul. Who walks out holding her face like she's the one that got the damage. She caught an elbow. As a, uh, right at the top of the mascara. Bettenbrock to the free throw line. She'll shoot two here. As Walker comes back into the lineup. Free throw good. Nice stroke there by the junior. Second throw on its way. It is back rim, no good. Steinbrock with a good box out has the rebound for Minneapolis. Skip pass Fulton, back out front to Walker. Almost a walk. Page, back to Steinbrock. Walker lines up a three ball, off the rim, no good. And Buttonbrock has the rebound for Ellsworth. Cravens off to Cranston. And it's stolen by Walker. Gets it off to Fulton. She has numbers, two on one. Skip pass to Shoemaker, shot, good. Thought Connor may have released that ball a little too late, but Shea did a great job of finishing it down low. I thought the same thing, Scott. But, uh, nice job by the Lady Lion, two senior ladies to finish that play. Shea was smart not to get too close under the basket. Bettenbrock, shot over the rim, no good. Cravens with the rebound, jump shot, stick back, no good. Uh, box out right there, nice box out by Bettenbrock as she gets good position down there and she's fouled. Uh, by <clears throat> number 22, Kelsey Page. That's Kelsey's second personal foul. That's going to send in there to get that offensive rebound. She's right back to the free throw line. Shoot two. First one is good. 22-12, Minneapolis by 10 here. Ellsworth making a little noise here in the first half. Free throw is good. They scored 25 points the whole game. Uh, against us not too long ago. So it looks like they've improved a little bit. I'm sure their coach is glad to see that. Walker out on top, oh. throws it away. And there's a double dribble on Buttonbrock, not called as the re referee was shielded. She gets all the way to the glass. The layup is good. 
Well, you're taught at a young age to you got to stop the ball on defense, and that's one thing Minneapolis is going to have to do on the defensive end. Page all the way in, jump shot no good, and Conley with the rebound gets it off to Merle. Left hand dribble all the way down she goes. She walked, walked turn around it. jump shot no good, and Colton comes out of there with a rebound. Gets it off to Walker. This zone defense, if they match right up to the ball, whoever's got it. <laughs> and Coach Weatherman wants a full timeout, and granted, as he wants to talk it over, Minneapolis letting Ellsworth hang tight here. 22 15. Outscored us there so far in the second quarter, only by one, but uh, still you're kind of letting them hang around in there. 22 15, we'll take a break. To you quality professional pharmaceuticals since 1963. Joe and Amber Wool will help you with your medications, durable medical equipment, cosmetics, gifts, and greeting cards. Your hometown pharmacy, City Pharmacy, downtown Minneapolis. Ada Grain is proud to be a sponsor of Lion Sports and hope that the boys and girls have a successful season. Ada Grain believes that sports and a quality education go hand in hand, building strong bodies and minds. Roth Repair has been a fixture in Minneapolis for some time now. Fixture, get it? Roth Repair can fix, replace, maintain, patch, build, remodel, and mend just about anything. The work is professional and the cost is reasonable. Roth Repair, Minneapolis. Call them today if you need something done right the first time. <clears throat> Welcome back to Minneapolis. Lady Lions had the ball here. They get it into Bailey Walker. Bolton. Gets it in to Shoemaker, and they're going to call that on Cranston reaching in, and they're calling that on the floor. That's the fourth team foul on Ellsworth. And that's Cranston's first personal foul. We play it in. Gregg with the ball. Interpass to Colton is stolen. Ellsworth doing a good job fronting our bigs in on the low block so far. Craven's entry pass is almost stolen. Oh, high dribble, shot off the glass, no good. Shoemaker has the rebound, gets it off to Greg. Now Fulton on the other side, good. Nice pass by Kylie Greg. Saw Connor Fulton all alone, running the floor on the opposite side, and the easy layup. Minneapolis 24, Ellsworth 15. Cravens with the ball, gets it off to Landon. Conley looking inside, this ball is tipped out of there by Steinbrock. Now Cranston and Shoemaker is whistled with a reach-in foul over the back. And that will be Shea Shoemaker's first foul. Pretty basic, and huh? As Colonel <laughs> comes back in, out front it goes Conley. Bentonbrock gets it off to Craven's jump shot, good. Cravens with a good looking jump shot in close. There's almost a steal by Merrill. Walker has the ball, gets it off to Fulton. Bragg, entry pass to Steinbrock. Shot no good, and Cranston with another reach in foul. I believe it's her second in as about as many minutes. Second personal foul, Allie Steinbrock will go to the line to shoot two here. 24 17, Ellsworth. Just down seven. Steinbrock's free throw, no good. Front rammed it. Checking in for Ellsworth, 12, Landon back in, and Cranston is going to find some pine here for the rest of the first half, I believe. Second throw, good. Steinbrock gets the second of two. Cravens in the backcourt. Minneapolis looking to do a little trapping here if we can get her to commit. Nice hands by Shoemaker. Craven's right there. Now Walker has a hand on it, and so does Greg. But Greg's hand was out of bounds, and it will be Ellsworth's ball. Nice hustle by Big Blue. Bettenbrock to play it in. Over the top it goes to Merle. Jump shot in the paint. No good. And Cravens with that rebound right over the top of Fulton. 
And Ellsworth just really out hustling us right now has got themselves back into this ball game. Two possession ball game now for Ellsworth. They're fronting Shoemaker down low with a big in front of and behind when she gets the ball down low. Cravens with a good defense on Shoemaker. She pops out for a three but cannot pull the trigger. Shoemaker, er, Walker's pass to Steinbach he is stolen by Ellsworth. Another turnover for Minneapolis. Turnover. Al Carroll in the backcourt. Turnover bug has kind of hit us now as we've had quite a few here in the second quarter. Steinbrock right out on Conley as she's hit a couple of threes from there. That one is off the mark. Bettenbrock's pass to Merle is tipped out of there by Steinbrock. And it will be Ellsworth ball. Play in under their own basket. Down six as Cross and Macy and Baker, and Baker come back in. Minneapolis is staying in a man-to-man -man here on the entry inbounds pass here. Bettenbrock shot. Coming in. <laughs> there you guys. They are. They've got, they're within four points of what they scored against us all year. Yeah. <laughs> they are hitting. That's been in the second quarter. Drag, entry pass to Shoemaker. Shot no good. And Williams has the rebound. Off to Cranston. Off to Bettenbrock. Pass is intercepted by Shoemaker right in the passing lane there. Now she gets all the way to the glass, layup good. Jay Shoemaker with the left hand layup as Ellsworth did not stop the ball and Shoemaker gets all the way to the rack for a layup. Entry pass to Cranston, back out to William, shot no good. That should be over the back by 12. I believe yep. you're right. It's Cassie Landon over the back of Macy as we've seen quite a few times. Macy with good position for rebounding. For the point guard. Yeah. And it will be Minneapolis call. Sixth team foul on Ellsworth. First personal foul on Landon. Now Shoemaker. Out front to Macy. Skip pass to Shoemaker. Baseline drive all the way in. Gets it back to Cross and Macy right there. Shot no good. Saved by Shoemaker. Out front to Greg in the paint, jump shot, no good. Dawson shot is blocked by Cranston, or Conley. And Bettenbrock comes out of there with that loose ball. Gets it off to Cranston. It's uh, passed yeah. by Kylie Greg <laughs> in passing. <clears throat> Kylie Greg with a reach in foul, it will be her first. It will be Minneapolis 15 foul. Bettenbrock to play it in, and the backcourt it is Merrill with the ball. Minute 20 left in this first half, and Ellsworth hanging tight with Minneapolis here. They're within six. Cranston has a hand on it, gets it back to Merrill. Pass out to Conley, and we're right out on her. Crossing doing a good job. Baker with a nice tip away there, but Bettenbrock. Did not touch it, and it will be Ellsworth Paul. Bettenbrock looking to throw it in and gets it right into Cranston misses a shot. Wow. Bettenbrock ties up Crossan and the possession arrow to Ellsworth. Nope. They'll get another chance at this with 58 seconds left in the first half. Cranston with the ball. Entry pass is tipped away by Shoemaker nicely, and Ellsworth now all the way down. Greg left hand layup. Shoemaker caught Greg streaking down the floor, and the layup is good. Turnover in the transition. Nice job by the Lady Lions. Bettenbrock gets it off to Merle. Looking for a pick. It's back to Landon. Skip pass to Bettenbrock. Dribble drive, 
And we got a reach in foul on Minneapolis. It's either Baker or Greg. And it is Baker. That's Riley Baker's first personal foul. Minneapolis six team foul. Connor Fulton back in the lineup for Minneapolis for a little more defensive presence under the board here. Cranston gets a shot off. Fulton's right there for the rebound. 12 to shoot. Let's see if Fulton can knock down another free ball for us. Shoemaker all alone. Take that shot. Yeah, oh, nice job. Nice job, Connor Fulton to Shea Shoemaker. That's good. That's good job. The first half. Nice job there in the last minute or so <clears throat> to get some points on the board as the Lady Lions take a lead in the half at 32 to 21. <clears throat> Minneapolis with the lead. We'll take a break and we'll be back with some stats. You're listening to 910 Canada.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. Welcome back to Minneapolis, Kansas as the Lady Lions have the lead 32 to 21 at the end of the first half as Minneapolis kind of Minneapolis uh, is just getting ready to tell Scott I'm looking square in the face of uh, Glazer. He's a kid that torched us for uh, 25, 26 points one game. We held him in check the next game, but I'm here to tell you a kid can play ball. He doesn't look like a basketball player. looks more like a forensics dude, but uh, I'm here <laughs> to tell you he can flat shoot the ball. He can. He is, uh, he is one heck of a ball player for a sophomore, and uh, that's on the Ellsworth Bearcats side on the boys side, but yeah, you're right, heck of a ball player. Uh, let's run through some stats real quick on the girls side uh, for the Ellsworth Bearcats. Uh, 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 Brittany Murrell with uh, senior with two points, followed by um, Brent Gr uh, Cravens, a freshman, with four points. Uh, Madison Conley, a junior, with eight points. And Brittany Bruttenbach, with seven points, and she's a junior as well. One of the Minneapolis Lady Lions, Connor Fulton with 11, Shea Shoemaker with 16, Kyla Gregg with two, Kelsey Page with two, and Riley Baker with one. Great first half performance by Shea and Connor with uh, putting up 27 points between the two of them. Uh, great job by those two ladies right there. In Minneapolis, though, um, the, uh, um, the Lady Lions are going to need to they're going to need to come out and put a little bit more intensity because Ellsworth has come to play tonight as evidence they were within six points at one time and they kept fighting and fighting and fighting. Uh, Minneapolis does pull away at the end there to take the 11 point lead at the half, but I'll tell you, uh, Ellsworth is one that there's no slots whatsoever. Like you mentioned, Scott, this is the season for Ellsworth and uh, they've got to have a win to move on, so does Minneapolis. And, uh, Right now, Ellsworth wants a little bit worse than Minneapolis, even though uh, Big Blue's doing a good job on the defensive end at times to create enough turnovers to keep them ahead in this ball game. Ellsworth able to hit some outside shots. Conley's hit a couple trays on us, and uh, they're just out hustling us at times, but uh, Minneapolis just keeping Ellsworth at arm's length right now. That, and they've got a little bit of size on the inside as well, and they've done a nice job of boxing out, getting some backside rebounds, and they've hit some open shots. Uh, Shea Shoemaker uh, come out, a little injury report here has come out. Uh, we talked about very early, she got hit before very hard. She finished the first half with 16 points, but she has uh, got an ice pack on her shoulder. Um, that's uh, not something we want to see as our leading scorer, senior leader. Um, uh, holding her shoulder with an ice pack. So, not sure um, Not sure if we'll see her in the second half. So, well, if she's able to go, she will go. Yeah, but, I, uh, I'd be ice pack. shocked if she wasn't up there. Yeah. <laughs> but we're really going to, I tell you, it was nice to see that three-pointer by her at the end of the half. But if we're going to go anywhere with the girls in these uh, six-game tournament here, uh, we're going to have to have some good production from her from the outside and, and uh, Connor continuing to contribute like she has so far in the first half. That and also, I, we have not, uh, granted, Ellsworth's got a little bit of size on us, Dale, but we have not put it, we've not taken it into the post very many times 
Well, uh, we, have, we have. They've blocked it a lot yeah, of times. So exactly. you gotta you got to free it up from the outside. Well, Make some adjustments on that. So, so. Minneapolis with the lead, 32 to 21. Mike, what a, what's the ladies going to? Uh, we talked a little bit, but what are some of the keys for them coming away with the victory tonight and increasing this lead and coming away with the victory at home? Well, ball movement inside out, uh, working that post, like you mentioned, Scott, is going to be one of the keys. The other key, I think, is uh, on the defensive end. The girls are going to have to play uh, just pressure defense. They're going to have to stop the ball when. Even though it's not their man and the ball is headed to the rack, you have got to go stop the ball and take control on the defensive end. I will be fine, but uh, I, so far we've outplayed them just enough to keep them uh, at bay here at Minneapolis with an 11-point lead. Bellsworth came to play tonight and uh, scored 21 points in the first half, and that's telling me defensively Minneapolis just not a, a really – Good defensive team here tonight so far. So far tonight, yeah. They've kind of they've allowed some and kind of struggled a little bit. So. Well, but 30 no. seconds uh, before we tip here. Ellsworth has hit some shots when they needed to as well, and I think that's going to be the other key is boxing out on the inside, not letting them have the get the offensive rebound, and just uh, hit some big points in transition, get those turnovers, transition points, and continue to put a lot of pressure on them. Well, the pep band's rocking and rolling tonight, isn't it? Does that sound good? Possession arrow to Minneapolis to start the second half here. We're ready to go. And it will be Fulton, Macy, Page, Shoemaker, and Steinbrock. And we get Kelsey Page and Allie Steinbrock in the offensive swing of things. Shoemaker is in there, even with the dinged up shoulder. We play it in, Macy all the way into the paint. Out front to Page, dribble drive by Shoemaker, all the way in, shot, no good. And the shoulder's hurting her a little bit. You can tell by the way she's holding her hand. Ellsworth to play it in, they throw it away. Turnover right off the get-go. <coughs> Minneapolis will have it under their own basket as Ellsworth player broke the other way and the ball went behind her. Macy. Bolton lines up a three ball, no good. Off the back of the rim, no good. And Shoemaker has the rebound back to Page. Macy, get your pass to Steinbrock, gets a good angle, get that pass in there. Shoemaker out on top. Page. Out front it goes to Macy. Dribble drive. Pass to Shoemaker. Back to Macy. Skip pass to Steinbrock. Right off her hands and out of bounds. Tried to get the ball down to the short corner. Steinbrock was there. The pass went out of bounds. It will be Ellsworth ball. Ravens, Ooh, almost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I thought that was a little bit of a... There was a third step there. Yeah, <laughs> so... It's going to say an extra step, and the uh, referees were right on top of that. Turnover. Ellsworth. Minneapolis play it in. Fulton to play it in for Minneapolis. Gets it in to Page. 2-3 zone by Ellsworth. ACE out on top. Left wing Page. Minneapolis doesn't seem to be in too big of a hurry here. Try to get Ellsworth out of this zone, actually. Dribble drive, Page in the paint. She is. Shot is good. Nice shot of Kelsey Page to dribble in and get the penetration and the bucket right there. And the steal by Ashlyn Macy. Great job. She make her left hand layup good. Nice job by Ashlyn Macy with the steal and the assist. Nice job. Macy with the three thievery and Shoemaker the recipient of the Nice pass down low. Uses the left hand nicely off the glass. Minneapolis all of a sudden with a 15 point lead. Cravens to play it in. Looking for help. Gets it off to Merrill. Bettenbrock. Yeah, Minneapolis has tightened up the defense a little bit, but Page, I think, is going to be whistled for uh, the reaching three on Kelsey. Yep. 
unfortunately that's three on Kelsey right there. It's a little delayed call right there. So. 36-21, Minneapolis with the lead. Ellsworth throws over the top. Cravens has the ball and Fulton has four. the foul. Fulton. Boy, you gotta be watching where that ball is coming from and they threw it right behind the Ellsworth player. Almost hit Fulton in the back of the head. Long shot on its way, no good. And Shoemaker clears out a little bit as Bettenbrock takes some of the bony elbow of Shoemaker. Cravens with a big play for Ellsworth. And Paige does exactly what I like to see. She gets over there and stops that ball and knocks it out of bounds and Ellsworth not able to get the easy layup. Earl, all the way in. Oh, thought she, thought she took a hop there before she was fouled, and they call a foul instead uh, on Minneapolis. Number five, five Carter. Carter. With the reach-in foul, it's her second. Cranston comes back in for Ellsworth. She has two fouls. Ettenbrock to play it in under their own basket. Gets it off to Merrill. Long shot. No good. And Steinbrock right there for the rebound. Nice job of getting it out to Kelsey Page there on the quick outlet. Macy gets it off to Shoemaker. Dribble drive in the paint. She goes. Layup. No good. Cravens picks up her dribble in the backcourt. Now Merrill with the ball. Nice crossover dribble. Long shot, rimming in and out. And Craven's in there hustling for the loose ball. Boy, Fulton could have picked up another one there. Etbrock rips it away. Now Steinbrock steals it. Macy on the move, gets it off to Shoemaker. Bounce pass to Page, shot. King no good. Ball. Nice job, nice pass uh, to Kelsey. Kelsey just couldn't finish it. Great, uh, great pass by Shea Shoemaker right there. Oh, it's on Cranston. It's her third. She just came in. And Paige will go to the free throw line to shoot two here. First throw on its way. Front rim. First time in tonight to Kira Swatty and Natasha Bruning, I think, in for the first time tonight. Page, a 51% free throw shooter. Always an adventure with hers. Second one on its way, rimming in. Svati with the ball, gets it off to Merle. And clears the timeline as Page with a good defense. Now Minneapolis with the the good double team and the steal. Shoemaker misses the layup. Fulton shot no good. Shoemaker tries to reverse left hand layup. Now Cravens all the way in. Layup good. Shoemaker had a couple of shots at it down low. Now uh, it's right away again. Not what you want to see right there. In that much of a hurry. Yep. 37-23. Out front, Svati. Off the bat, Brock loses the handle, and Macy right there to pick it up for Minneapolis. Turnover, Ellsworth. All the way in, Page. Layup, no good, and Bettenbrock, I believe, will be whistled with the foul. No, it's on Schwadi. It's waiting for Denny to pronounce that, to see if I had enough Swat V's in there or not. There's no V. Swati. Friday. Free throw rimming in. It's Page up. has hit two in a row from the free throw yeah, line. Is, that's in relation to a state representative. Yes. Uh -huh. So, you see a V, but it's no yep. W. Yep. It's a W. Swati. Second throw on its way, rimming out. Shoemaker has the board from Minneapolis. Ugh. Shot no good as she ties up Bettenbrock in the back court. Shoemaker with some good hustle there to get the tie up. Possession arrow to Ellsworth. Minneapolis with a 15 point lead, 38-23. Long full court 
pass is intercepted by Page. Shoemaker comes up with the loose ball, pass to Fulton, shot. No good. And Bettenbrock has the rebound, and Fulton has the reach in foul. Either Fulton or Shoemaker. It is yeah, Shoemaker. Shoemaker. I, I thought they. So. 406 left in the third quarter. Minneapolis with a 15 point lead. They throw over the top to Merrill again. Jump shot, no good. Fulton has it. Now the long pass to Page. Travel. Ooh. You're right. I kind of thought she took the extra step, scooted the feet, but the foul caused it. And she'll go back to the free throw line to shoot two here. Foul was on Pettenbrock. First throw on its way. It is no good. Back rim. Conley back in for Roddy. Kelsey shooting 51% from the line this year. Second throw on its way, front rim. And Conley has the board for Ellsworth. Conley left wing, entry pass to Cravens, jump shot no good, and she is fouled. And she'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Foul is on Connor Fulton. Third personal on Connor is uh, Cravens. Be Cravens. Will be shooting two. First one rimming off as Cross and Walker, Greg and Baker enter the contest. Fulton will stay in. I think they're going to let Shoemaker rest that shoulder just a little bit. Craven's second free throw on its way. It is good. 39-24. Lady Lions are going to call a full time out here. 38-24, to 14 point lead here. 346 left to go in the third quarter. Uh, we'll go ahead and take one with them as the Lady Lions have the lead at the 346 mark in the third. You're listening to 910KNA.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. Farm Bureau's wide range of insurance and financial products help protect what's most important, your family, auto, home, and other possessions. Call your Farm Bureau Financial Services agent in Minneapolis, George Dressy. Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company. Let's make it delicious. Let's make it fast. Let's make it a meal from KT's in downtown Minneapolis. KT's, home of the almost world-famous hamburger. KT's wishes the Lions best wishes during the upcoming season. The State Bank of Delphus and the Ottawa County Bank in Minneapolis are locally owned community banks committed to making your banking experience as easy and personal as possible. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to Minneapolis, Kansas. As Lady Lions have the ball here on the floors, Fulton, Page, Baker, Crossan, and Walker. Drag with the ball in the backcourt, clears the timeline. Murrow with a good defense. Walker looking for some offense here. Minneapolis gets the ball down low to the short corner. As Baker has it down low now, looks at a long two. It's off the front of the rim, no good. Crossing has the nice rebound. J.C. Crossing. Nice rebound by J.C. right there. We needed that right there. Good, nice rebound. Now Merle in the backcourt. Oh, almost dragged a pivot foot. Williams gets it off to Conley. Bettenbrock now with the ball. Back to Conley. Puts the ball on the floor. Bettenbrock looks at a three. It is short. Fulton right there for the rebound. Gets it off to Walker. We have numbers. Crossing all the way in against Conley. Rebound, or layup, no good. Missed a few of those layups tonight. Uh, as a team we have, not necessarily individually, but as a team we missed a few opportunities right there. Burke. Ryder Baker gets a foul. Burning in the lineup for a little bit for Ellsworth. And she is replaced. Goes right back out as Cranston comes back in. 2.53 left. Walker guarding Merle and the inbounds pass is ricocheted right off her lower portion of her back. That one goes through the hands 
of Battenbrock out of bounds to Minneapolis. Fulton to play it in, 2.40 left in the third quarter. Minneapolis leading by 16. Craig with the ball. Clears the timeline. Right wing back out front to Fulton. Now Baker back out front to Greg. Entry pass to Crossan. Turnaround jump shot. Good. There you go. Nice job, J.C. Crossan. Great look on the inside to see her in there. She posted up very well and did a nice move. Nice job by J.C. Crossan. Earl gets the ball over half court and pass goes right through the hands of Landon and out of bounds. Turnover Ellsworth, Minneapolis to play it in. Fulton with the ball. Walker in the backcourt. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Fulton. Skip pass to Walker and it goes out of bounds and we return the favor. Substitution for Cravens comes back in for Ellsworth as Merrill will get a breather. Throw it in, Conley has the ball. Now she throws it away, crossing with it. All the way in she goes. Now the oh, ball is swatted out of there nice by block. Conley. Nice block by Conley. Baker had a, excuse me, Crossan had a great steal, took it coast to coast, but uh, <laughs> uh, nice block there by the Ellsworth Bearcats. Bearcats uh, take a timeout. Lady Lions have a 42 to 24 lead here, 18 point lead here with a minute 45 left in the third quarter. Uh, Ellsworth has just got three points here in the third quarter as we will take a break. You're listening to 910 Canada.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. City Pharmacy has brought to you quality professional pharmaceuticals since 1963. Joe and Amber Wool will help you with your medications, durable medical equipment, cosmetics, gifts, and greeting cards. Your hometown pharmacy, City Pharmacy, downtown Minneapolis. Ada Grain is proud to be a sponsor of Lion Sports and hope that the boys and girls have a successful season. Ada Grain believes that sports and a quality education go hand in hand, building strong bodies and minds. Roth Repair has been a fixture in Minneapolis for some time now. Fixture, get it? Roth Repair can fix, replace, maintain, patch, build, remodel, and mend just about anything. The work is professional and the cost is reasonable. Roth Repair, Minneapolis. Call them today if you need something done right the first time. Minneapolis to play it in. I thought Ellsworth was playing the other end of the court. Minneapolis played in under their own basket. Out front it goes Walker off to Greg. Fulton with a look from uh, three-point range. Misses everything. And Bettenbrock rescues the ball. Cravens with the ball in the backcourt. There's the timeline for Ellsworth. Always an adventure with them bringing the ball up court. Walker with a good defense. All right, second violation called. Nice job by, uh, by Walker as she forces the turnover with the good defense. Closely guarded by, for five seconds and it was a nice turnover by Minneapolis. Lee Lyons with the ball as Walker brings it down and sets it in the hands of Greg. Greg looks back to the top of the key to Fulton. Fulton at the top of the key, swing pass over to Walker. Walker looks back to Fulton, Fulton back to Walker. Walker on the left-hand side, swings down low to Baker as it goes back to Walker. Entry pass to Crossan, turn around, little baby hook. Off the glass, no good, and Conley clears the glass for Ellsworth. Well, Scott, you and I had mentioned we saw a military man in the house. Uh, he's an Army man. And there's a nice interception by Walker. We have numbers two on one. Pass to Crossan, jump shot off the glass, good. There will be a presentation in between games here tonight. It will be uh, to recognize Jake Eckert as the Iron Man of the Year in the Army for that uh, phenomenal night he had on the football field. Long shot by Conley, no good. And look at the good position by Greg. Right, nice job as foul will be on Bettenbrock as their fourth team foul. Dale, can you come up with all the stats, uh, the amount of uh, touchdowns and yardage he gives you at over 400 yards and six touchdowns. Can you get the official stats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want this. Hey, you know, stuff. we expect a lot of you, Dale, I, I don't we? I didn't bring my laptop on. <laughs> Bragg with the ball. Gets it off to Fulton. 18 seconds left in the third quarter. 
Now Walker out on top, Fulton has hit a three at the buzzer here tonight. We'll probably get another look here shortly. Spin move, no good. Crossing off to Baker, jump shot, no good. We do get a good look at him. Yeah, double dribble <laughs> by Cranston or Cravens. So. Cravens lets it rip three-quarter court. It does not come close, and that's the way the third period will end. Minneapolis with a 20-point lead, 44-24. We'll be back with fourth quarter action here in just a minute. Before we do that, I will ascertain he did set school records for rushing in the single game, plus touchdown score. In that ball game. That's a pretty impressive evening for Jake Eckert. We will honor him here in about 10 minutes. It's fast, it's furious, and it's fun. It's Minneapolis Raceway. Minneapolis Raceway has brought you exciting races to central Kansas and will continue the tradition. Minneapolis Raceway will give you and your family some of the most exciting races ever seen. Go Lions! The Minneapolis Junior Senior High School linebackers are proud to continue their long-term support of the broadcast to the Lions game. Join them as they support student activities and the teachers of Minneapolis Junior Senior High School. Go Lions! We're with you all the way. Back to the last stanza. Lions leading by 20. Love you guys. And the possession arrow again. Connor Fulton to play it in. Eight minutes left in this contest. Minneapolis in control, but not after Ellsworth gave us a big scare. Uh, Ellsworth scoring uh, 27 points in the first half. Minneapolis tightened up the defense here a little bit in the second half. Page in the paint. Gets it off to Steinbrock. Shot no good. Oh, Macy comes in with a big rebound under there. Can't finish it, though, but great rebound by Ashland Macy. Connolly comes out of there with a rebound for Ellsworth. Air pass off to Swati, and she cannot get a hand on it. Goes out of bounds to Minneapolis. Macy gets it off to Shoemaker. Page redirecting the offense. Right wing, Macy's. Down low to Steinbrock, shot way over the rim, no good. Shoemaker with the rebound, stick back. Fulton, actually. Excuse me, that was Fulton. We have an ankle sprain. Yep. Underneath the basket. It's Conley, rolled the ankle. I oh, hate to see that. Too many bodies down there came across and uh, landed on. Stepped on a foot. On a foot, and you have that happen, so. Uh, Dale, let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break here. 46 to 24 as we've got an injury on the floor. Uh, you're listening to 910 Canada.com as well as Eagle Communication Channel 8. Bennington State Bank is proud to sponsor the Minneapolis Lions this season. They're proud to be a part of their great community and strive for excellence in their school curriculum and athletics. Bennington State Bank, your trusted hometown bank, with offices in Bennington, Minneapolis, Salina, and Wamego. Member FDIC. Where do you go when you need groceries? Jeans IGA, of course. Jeans is proud to be a sponsor of Minneapolis Sports and hopes that you will encourage your children to be as competitive in the classroom as they are in sports. Jeans IGA, a proud sponsor of today's game. Welcome back to Minneapolis High School. As Whitney Williams checks in for the injured player, as Bearcats will have the ball. 46-24, Lady Lions with the lead. Body to play it in. Mural with the ball in the backcourt. 7.15 left in this contest. And Minneapolis with a comfortable 21-point lead. Bruning into the contest. Swati with the ball out front to Merle. Minneapolis man-to-man -man defense. Bruning, shot, good. Turn around, jump shot right there at the top of the key and Bruning able to knock it down for Ellsworth. Now Shoemaker, dribble drive in the paint. Nice jump down pass to Steinbrock, and that shot is up and in. Nice pass by Shoemaker to Ali Steinbrock. Easy layup for the 5'9 post. Burning back out front to Swati. Earl loses the handle on it, but Swati rescues it, rescues it. Almost steps back court. Gets it off to Merle. 
Saints are on right now. Let me know. Down the lane she goes. She gets it off to Williams. It goes out of bounds to Minneapolis. Try to get it down low to Whitney Williams. Good idea. Williams could not come up with the loose ball. Macy gets it off to Page on the right wing. Back to Macy. Dribble drive by Shoemaker, back to Page. Fulton with the ball. Skip pass to Shoemaker. Uh, Battenbrock with the reach-in foul, I believe. That will be her <laughs> second, I believe. Third foul. You got her for three. three so. You're right. It is her third foul. That's Ellsworth's fifth team foul, Fulton to play it in for Minneapolis. Out front, Shoemaker. Macy, entry pass to Steinbrock, stepped out of there by Bruning, intercepted by Macy, shot by Fulton up and in. Nice job by Macy to get that ball back after Steinbrock unable to keep come up with the, the pass. Almost a walk by Craven. Steinbrock with the rebound. Gets it off to Macy. All the way in she goes. Left hand shot. No good. Bruning has it for a minute. Cravens has it now. Macy catches up to her in a heartbeat. Bruning gets it off to Williams. Cravens all, or uh, Cranston all alone for a while. Now Macy has the rebound. Gets it off to Shoemaker. She was all alone. I tell you, Cranston was, uh, Cranston was camped out underneath the basket for quite a bit of time there. They couldn't see and her, they could they? See her. That's couldn't what see all her. the yelling was about, huh? Yep. yep. Shoemaker has a layup, and Williams comes to get her. She'll go to the free throw line to shoot two here. 50 to 26, Shoemaker, first throw on its way. It's good. Greg Baker crossing and Walker in. Shoemaker to get her second free throw here. Off the front of the rim, no good. Crossing in there, fighting for that rebound. Ties up Williams, and it will be Ellsworth ball. Possession arrow to the Lady Cats. 4.56 left in this contest. Minneapolis with the lead. Ellsworth with the ball. Each team with six team fouls. Closely guarded, Cranston with the ball with the behind the back dribble, loses control of it completely. Cravens comes to rescue that one. Long shot. Off the back of the rim, no good. Dina Lyon checks in also for the Minneapolis Lady Lions. Uh, she sees her first action of the night. Danae. Danae, sorry about that. The I guess. I was following Denny on that one. You pronounce it. Anyway. The Bearscats have scored I wouldn't all know five that points either. this half. Yes, the they tournament last year. It's where I picked that up. Oh, the pass by ba uh, Walker slips out of her hand, and Greg rescues it for Minneapolis. Walker, long shot. Looks good. It's a three ball. Bailey Walker with her first three of the evening. As Scott mentioned, Dene Line in the lineup for Minneapolis. Williams, turnaround shot, no good. Crossing with the rebound. We almost have numbers. Greg takes it all the way in, jump shot, rimming off. Crossing has it, oh, she is smothered. Gets her own rebound, Walker shot up and good. And good, nice job by Bailey Walker. Great job by Crossing down low as Walker gets the bucket. And she will go to the line. Crossing got the rebound, and Walker was on the back side. Crossing pass. That one was up and in. Crossing kind of got hammered down there. Was... Kind of. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'll try to be nice. 56 to 26. Emma Giles in the contest. 345 left. Bailey Walker to the free throw line for the and one. Shot on its way, it is short. 
Crossing had a hand on it, so did Baker, and Bruning has the rebound for Ellsworth. Crossing checks out, and Emma Giles checks in. Ouch. Cravens all the way in, shot, no good. Denae has the rebound and loses control with a little help from Merle from the back. The ball goes out of bounds to Ellsworth. That pass is intercepted by Baker. She can cover ground fast. Walker goes right through her hand. Dene line right there for the rescue. And Minneapolis back with the possession. Baker baseline drive is shut down by the Lady Cats. Now the baseline shot by Baker. It's no good. And Cravens has the rebound. And Greg has the reach in foul, I believe. Gotta it's a it one and one. So Cravens will head to the charity stripe. Both teams in the one and one from here on out. 236 left in this contest. 56-26. Cravens at the free throw line to shoot a one and one. First throw on its way. It is good. As Scott mentioned, Emma Giles in the contest along with Riley Baker, Kylie Gregg, Bailey Walker, and Danae Line. Second throw is no, no good. Emma Giles clears the board for Minneapolis. Rescue, ball was rescued over there by Gregg. Now out front it goes, Baker has the ball. Off to Bailey Walker. Right wing Gregg, Danae Line, baseline Dribble drive is shut down. Nice entry pass to Emma Giles. Turnaround jump shot, no good. And Cranston has the rebound for Ellsworth. Merle with the ball out on top. Guarded closely by Line. Entry pass to Craven. Shot, no good. And she is fouled by, I think, Kyler right. Gregg. Yep, good call. And that's her third foul. Foul is on number two. Craven's back to the free throw line to shoot two here. First throw is no good. Off the front of the rim. And she will get a second one. Mercy rule is in effect as the clock continues to run, evidently. We were ahead 30, so. Continuous clock now as we're under a minute. Minneapolis to play it in. Dettenbrock back in for Ellsworth. Bragg with the ball in the backcourt. Let's the ball come up and uh, dribble once off her cheek. Now back down, rescued Minneapolis. Is going to come away with a victory here tonight. Bragg with the ball. Between the legs, dribble. Loses it out of bounds. It's going to pretty much end at the 20 seconds left. Ellsworth may get a shot off here, but. Battenbrock over to Merle. Dribble drive. Jump shot. She is fouled. The time will expire before free throws. Are and she will not get free throws off, I believe. Foul is on Walker. And that's the way this contest is going to end. Minneapolis victorious here tonight. 56. 28. She'll still get her shots. They're going to give them her shots. So. Merrill will get two here. That one off the mark. Second throw is the same as the first one. Missing and Merrill misses them both. That's the way it will end. Minneapolis 56. Ellsworth. 28. I'm uh, told real Dale we're going to have the presentation of the Ironman in between games here, so we probably look forward to the military man and let's go get our stats done. We'll get it figured out. All right. Gentlemen, if we can have your attention, please direct your attention over here to the scores table. <coughs> Tonight, and at this point, I'm going to turn the microphone over to a local recruiter from the U.S. Army. 
Welcome back to Minneapolis here as uh, we have a, a ceremony evening. going on here. Thank you for joining us today on this special presentation. I am Sergeant Anthony Troiano with the U.S. Army. As I'll let you kind of listen on. Hopefully we can pick this up, Dale. I want to thank Principal Basie, Athletic Director Terry Meckle, and Head Football Coach Jerry Mick for making this presentation possible. In life, there's strong, and then there's Army strong. In football, there's playing the game, and then there's being an Iron Man. The Iron Man Award, presented by Jostens, honors the best two-way high school football player in the state of Kansas. Playing and excelling on offense and defense, the Army Iron Man must demonstrate physical and emotional strength, as well as strength of character. The Army Iron Man embodies the qualities of Army Strong. More than 35,000 high school football fans from across the state voted, selecting Minneapolis High School's Jake Ecker as the 2009 winner of the Well deserved as they give a presentation to Jake Eckert as he receives the 2009 Iron Man Award for best uh, best both offense and defense. That was a performance at the state all year there. long in football, and he went up against all classes. Eckert, both offense and defense, had quite a night. As they give some stats here. Uh, so they just did the stats there. Minneapolis, uh, five touchdowns. For the season, Six, uh, sixth touchdown was a kickoff punt return. Over 400 yards. Some great stats being put up here. This is going to be good. receives a, a ring um, that, uh, uh, from the United States Army in Jostens as for his performance against the Republic County, uh, Republic County uh, High School in the, I'm not sure, week six game, is that what he said, Dale? Yeah, I don't remember. But it, either way, 48 <laughs> to nothing, over 400 all-purpose yards, um, or 400 rushing. Yeah. rushing yards. It was close to 500 all-purpose yards, if I remember right. Well, he had an 84-yard punt, re so. punt return for touchdown, so, so might have went over it. I don't know. Jake Eckert receives a ring and uh, a special. That's pretty uh, pretty awesome to receive that ring. Awesome. It's a, a pretty amazing little uh, award to be received right there. Is, uh, One of a kind yep. by Jostens. It's <laughs> quite, quite a little trinket in that box, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Well-deserved Eckert with a heck of a night. That night on the football field, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll run through some stats real quick as the Lady Lions come away to the victory tonight by a score of 56 to 28 over the Ellsworth Bearcats. As uh, uh, at the end of the first half, uh, Mike was a little nervous. Uh, Ellsworth was kind of holding right in there until about the last minute or so in the third quarter, second quarter, then they pulled away. But the defense shut them down in the second half, only giving them seven points total by the Ellsworth Bearcats in the second half. Now they scored all their points in the first half. Minneapolis, you could tell, did tighten up on the defensive end there. 
to start the second half and uh, a little more pressure and a few more turnovers. Ellsworth just not able to handle the pressure, but uh, after a while, uh, it just seemed like their half court set was not, uh, they weren't hitting and, and uh, the half court set was just not there anymore. No, it wasn't. <clears throat> and, the lady, and the Lady Lions come away, pull away as they score. Uh, 18 in the first quarter, first quarter, 14 in the second, 12 in the third, and 12 in the fourth. Nice performance by the Lady Lions tonight as they came away with the victory by a score of 56 to 28. Run through some stats real quick. Uh, probably the most interesting stats um, real quick here. A total of 29 turnovers by Ellsworth. 14 in the first half, 15 in the second half. Totally unofficial right there. Minneapolis did a much better job of controlling the ball themselves as they go seven in the first half and five in the second half. Um, points for the Ellsworth Bearcats. Um, leading the way, Cravens with nine points. Conley with eight. Bettenbrock with seven. Mural with two. And Bruning with two points as they end the night with 28. For the Minneapolis Lady Lions as... Um, Bailey Walker with five, Kylie Gregg with two, Kelsey Page with six, J.C. Crossan with six, Allie Steinbach with three, senior leader Connor Fulton with 15, and senior leader Shay Shoemaker with 19. So great performance by the Lady Lions tonight as they get done what needed to get done as they come away with the victory tonight by a score of 56 to 28. So we'll have to check with Coach Weatherman when he gets out here to see if uh, Shoemaker's shoulder is just a little bit loose or whether she tweaked it a little bit. But um, as Scott mentioned, Minneapolis had to do what they had to do here, here tonight was win and move on and uh, get ready for the Lady Trojans Friday night. Should be a heck of a game. The Lady Trojans Friday night. What was that? What we assume will be the Lady Trojans Friday night. Uh, yeah, <coughs> we assume. I think uh, I think that was a little wake-up call for the uh, Trojans there, as I'm sure that they were probably ready to play. Uh, they play tomorrow night, though. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, they do. So they play tomorrow night. So that's just going to give Weatherman a chance to go up to uh, Boyd and watch, uh, do a little scouting. They've met them twice, uh, just to see who they play and how they play. So Lady Lions coming with the victory tonight by a score of 56 to 28. As uh, 7 of 14 from the free throw line, Shea Shoemaker was 4 for 5 as the Lady Lions, as I said earlier, come away with a victory of tonight. Well, I guess we'll probably just sign off and come back. Uh, if Coach Weatherman comes back, we'll get him on the front side. Okay. Well, folks, we will go ahead and take a break, and then we'll be back. Uh,